This is Azerbaijan, the country hosting the Europa League final. Here is where the game will be played, and here is a sample of outside stadia. Ridden with territorial and ethnic conflicts. <laughs> It's okay to be gay. This is so against the word of God. It's, it's not acceptable in Islam. This is Henrik Nkhitaryan of Arsenal. He won't be playing because UEFA, the governing body, can't guarantee his safety. Microcosmic of Azerbaijanese citizens. More than 150 people have been detained on politically motivated charges while mass arrests are used to silence the media and crack down on non-governmental organizations. UEFA, who on their website promotes football, is open to everyone, wants the game here? A journalist was ambushed and beaten after making a comment about an athlete who allegedly made an insulting nationalist gesture at a Cypriot journalist. His name was Rasim Aliyev. He died from this assault. Journalists are murdered. And UEFA, who put out falsehood PR spins like the anti-discrimination fight, wants Baku to host this match? Aliyev is one of hundreds of attacks and murders against journalists for which nobody has been prosecuted, including imprisonment on trumped-up charges because of articles that were critical of the authorities. UEFA sees this as okay? Azerbaijan was named the most anti-LGBT country in Europe behind Turkey and Armenia. Why does UEFA not care? In Baku, the host city of the final, local activists said at least 50 gay and trans people have been detained in police raids across the capital. Baku, LGBTQ citizens had been subjected to beatings, verbal abuse, and forced medical exams, while trans women have had their heads forcibly shaven. The final is the second, supposedly, biggest match in club football. Why did UEFA plan Baku as the host city? We must ensure that Azerbaijan isn't allowed to sports wash its appalling human rights record as a result of the football fanfare, said Amnesty International's UK director, Kate Allen, for which I concur. The face of the unguaranteed safety is Arsenal's M. Katarian, who's from Armenia, Azerbaijan's neighbor, with which it has a strained relationship, to say the least. Due to the long-standing conflicts between the countries, Arsenal feel like M. Katarian would not be safe venturing to Baku for the final. The Azerbaijani ambassador to the UK left little doubt. The player would be safe, as long as he stuck to sports while in the country. However, if you want to play the issue, he added, then that's a different story. The restrictions reach Britain, blocking all attempts to date by Brit fans with Ian slash Jan surnames from attending the event, regardless of whether they have even anything to do with Armenia. What the f What are we doing here? Azerbaijan is in the grip of a sinister human rights crackdown, with journalists, bloggers, and human rights defenders being ruthlessly targeted, unfair trials, and smear campaigns remain commonplace. On top of all of this, the stadium will appear empty as Arsenal and Chelsea to send back up to 6,000 unsold Europa League final tickets. Furthermore, sponsors are sending back tickets. And to that I say, good. This is a travesty fueled by UEFA, a hypocritical body of the riches in European soccer, placing an ever so important match in a country that promotes anti-gay, anti-journalist, anti-free speech tactics to restrain the progression of basic human rights. Sign the petition via change.org. It's at almost 25,000 signatures. As Kate Allen puts it, all too often, governments are using high-profile sporting competitions to distract attention from repressive policies and human rights violations to instead project an image of openness. This couldn't be further from the truth with this current administration and the Arsenal-Chelsea clash is just the latest reminder of this.